Hello everyone, my name is Keegan Keen, and today I'm going to be going over my chainmail substance and showing you how you can make a very simple chainmail pattern. As you can see, it doesn't take that many nodes to make a full chainmail pattern. And I'm not going to be going into the nitty gritty of functions and stuff like that. They're very simple functions, but I want to get through this very quickly so people don't have to waste their time. All right. So if I go over to the parameters, one thing you will notice is that you can switch between multiple chainmail patterns on the substance. So I can go to a 4-in-1 pattern or a circular 4-in-1. And that is what the function is doing. It's very simple. It basically looks to see what number is here. And then each of these blending nodes in the middle is what switch between all the outputs. But I want to go over how to make the chainmail pattern. So the first thing I did was I took two shape nodes and made one a little bit smaller to subtract from the first one to get this ring. I could have used one last node by using an edge detect, but those are very intensive for CPU calculation. So after that, I use a bevel node to round out to get one single ring. Next thing I need to do is slant that ring, and that's where I took a gradient linear one. And then I took a levels node and raise the minimum black bar down here because it was subtracting just a little bit too much from it. I wanted to make it a bit higher. After that, I take this pattern and I flip it 180. And this is because on this chain mount pattern, we see we've got one that it has the dark area on top and the higher area at the bottom. And so the way I've been doing this is using the max light and blending mode. So the way that blending mode works is it will look at the pixel on the background and foreground. And it's going to choose the highest pixel. So we can see here we got some pixels that are pretty dark. And on here we've got some pixels that are dark here and higher here. It's going to choose the higher pixel as you can see over here. And the lower pixel on here. And that is a very easy way to blend height shapes when you want to layer things on top of each other. And that's what I do for the rest of the chain mount armor. After that, I used a levels node to clamp this down a little bit to get more range on it. And then on here, so I take this pattern, and this is a European 4-in-1 chain mount now if I tile that. So we've already got a chain mount pattern and very few nodes, which I do take and blend with the others so I can switch between them all and the substance parameters. So to do 6 and a 1, I take this pattern and I move it up by 0.5, as you can see here. And then I blend them back together using the max lighten again, which will layer whatever is supposed to be on top on top, according to the height. Now I'll get you this sort of chainmail pattern. After that, I can take that same pattern again, take it to here to use the max lighten blending mode, I take this and I move it up again by 0.25 this time. And I blend those together to get this sort of pattern. And then finally, the densest is 10 and 1. So max lighten again, take the previous export, move it up by 0.5 this time, and then max lighten blend together. And just like that, you've got quite a few different chainmail patterns for your substance. I also went down here to make a circular 4 and 1 chain mail pattern. So the way I did that is back here to this previous step, I, I now I think about it, I could have just taken this input and moved it down here, I believe. It does seem there is a small difference. I'm not sure why I didn't do that. I'm sure there's a reason for why I did that, but let's go ahead on to this. It might have actually been, now I think about, I was getting some bad clipping here for certain areas. I think that's why I didn't raise this up like I did with this one. Anyway, so I moved, take this and I shrinked it down a little bit and moved it to the upper left. I kind of had to do a little of guessing with this to get to here. So you may have to come back here and fiddle with the numbers a little bit and try some different scaling methods. 
then I take that and I plug into another transformation 2D node and I just rotate this 90 degrees. You can see it rotated about the center and blend those back together. Now I can just take that pattern and rotate it 180 and use max light and again to blend those back together. And then I shrunk this down a little bit and moved it to the corners with this. So if I hit space here, you can see this kind of pattern and this kind of pattern. Then max lighten to blend them together. Very easy for layering stuff. And all of those outputs are going to come into these different blend nodes here. And that is what the parameter for the pattern, the chainmail type here I have, is doing. Is it's going to turn on and turn off the correct blend nodes to get the final export here. After that, the pattern here, which is whatever is being fed through, will go into the tile sampler, which this tiles that make it dense. If I actually click it. There we are. And I take that and I'm well the first thing we can do for that, this is our, our perfect height and normal information. So I can plug that into the normal slot here and plug that into normal mat. And then I can take that and bring it down here and plug it into the histogram range node for the height, which also goes into our ambient inclusion node for the output. I also took this and used the levels to get opacity so we can have see-through areas on here. So that feeds into an opacity output. For roughness, I made a kind of base grungy metal roughness map using a few different grunges and clouds and blending together using a grunge. And then at the end here, I added in from this node here. So this feeds into a normal node because a curvature node wants normal input. So if you feed that into normal, you feed that into a curvature, which gets you some curvature information. Then you feed that into a metal edge wear node. So it wants curvature and it wants aim inclusion. You can also plug in a world space normal and position for additional details. Some of the different parameters will be affected by that. But once I got the general kind of lining of the different areas for the rings, I took that as a mask and used it to add in roughness on those areas. And I wanted those rougher areas to be kind of like rust. So I took the same mask and moved it up here for the color. So I can have a darker color for wherever there's supposed to be our more rust color. And I believe that just about covers everything on this chainmail substance. So if you guys have been curious about when I'm going to be releasing this chainmail substance along with the other nine substances, they will be coming to GameTextures.com in the future. So you have to stick around and wait for them to appear there. Thanks for watching.